<clears throat> All right. Um, welcome to uh, a discussion of the bug bounty program. Um, there was a, an amendment um, that was rejected last month uh, in June. And uh, so I went, I went through the, the reasons for you know, the main, the main, the rejection and um, some comments, comments stood out to me, like creating reliance on one particular platform and its rule set for the bug bounty program. And um, a suggestion to create, create a set of universally acceptable rules uh, for any bug bounty program to follow. Um, so I, I asked for some help doing that. And uh, I'm glad to say that uh, Bona Publica, one of the aligned de delegates, reached out with a, uh, a proposal to do approximately that. And um, now we have a, uh, a new um, MIP amendment subproposal in RFC, which will be voted on in August. Um, this is uh, a MIP 102C2 uh, SP11. And I put the link in the chat. I'm going to just do it again, just to make sure everyone has it. <clears throat> okay. And um, so what's different about this compared to uh, the rejected proposal is that there's kind of like a, a generic bug bounty program, uh, uh, like plugin interface in the scope. I'm, I'm a software person. So I think in terms of uh, APIs, um, and uh, so that's that's kind of what um, Otis' propo proposal, Bonner Publica's proposal reflected, and I customized it about a bit. Um, and then I added Immunify Security as um, the first bug bounty program administrator. Um, and that, that's what's reflected in the pull request. And let's see. And then there were some questions suggested by uh, Patrick. Um, and then I'll, after I get through um, some questions and comments, then, uh, then I'll just open the floor for discussion. Um, let's see. So um, this maker governance think this program provides value. Um, I, I, think, I think it's pretty clear that it does. Um, I've talked to Dennis and he supports it and uh, some of the other developers support it. Uh, I just got done closing a uh, a bug um, related to the Arbitrum level two work this morning. Um, so those the level two people support it. Um, I mean that's uh, of course open open to um, debate, but that that's my sense. Does the does maker governance agree with the proposed budget? You know that that's something we could discuss. Um, does maker governance want to review the current payout amounts? Um, the, the payout amounts control kind of like would like it, it's currently one of the largest um, bounties on the Immunify platform with a maximum payout of 10 million 10 million die. So um, that, that kind of like we can't really estimate the budget for the program because it depends uh, which bugs are found. Um, but but uh, by changing the the payout amounts for different um, severities of bugs, that, that's one way to control the cost of the program. And um, does maker governance want to continue with the, the um, proposed payout processes, which are, um, I've just assumed we'll just keep them the same, but uh, as, as we've done, you know, for the last year and a half, but, um, you know, that that's, could be uh, revised as well. Um, let's see, Bono Publica in, uh, Reviewing the uh, what I put together, um, he pointed out that the exclusions to the bug bounty program, the language there could be improved, but um, uh, it's not clear to me how to improve it. So I, I'd be open to suggestions. And um, let's see, is there anything else that I want to specifically mention? Um, there's a bunch of discussion in the thread I posted, but um, I think I think that's the um, I think I've addressed most of it. So yeah, so I want to just open the floor for questions or discussion. 
there's some messages on the chat. Oh yeah. Um, right. So Patrick is saying that I wasn't saying they didn't I was trying to spark conversation. Oh, uh, so, right. So Patrick posted a bunch of questions, um, uh, trying to spark discussion and he, I guess he wasn't trying to um, uh, imply that the, like, for example, the first one that, do you think the get maker governance, um, does, does maker governance think that the bug bounty program provides value? He wasn't saying that it doesn't. Um, he was just raising these these questions. And then true name, let's see, then he, he says correct. Uh, and then true name commented, uh, would any of those supporters be able to post their comments on the forum thread? It would help to have some public discussion from ecosystem actors with experience interacting with the program. Oh, okay. Um, so you're asking for developers to post in the forum thread. Okay, I, well, I can, uh, uh, I can ask them to do that. Um, they have in the past and I will, I mean, they're just very busy. So like it took me a week. Um, sometimes it takes me a week to get information out of them because uh, they're busy and they, um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reach out and see if they can do that. Thanks, True Name. Um, I guess I could add a short comment from my side as well. Um, you know, I just want to reemphasize that we're willing to work with the make maker ecosystem um, in whatever way to, to continue the bug bounty program moving forward. Um, we're happy to make modifications um, to the way the bug bounty program is. I mean, that's actually always been the case. You know, in the past, we've allowed the other core units to essentially for the most part, state their own rules for their own assets. Um, say like, okay, we're not gonna care about low or medium. Um, <clears throat> we will just do critical, that's fine. Um, you know, if, if an asset needs to be removed from the assets and scope table, that's also fine. If something needs to be added, that's also fine. There's no issue around there. If there's an exception clause that needs to be added, no question, no problem. Um, the only thing, of course, we can't add is something like, oh, yeah, even if it's valid and they can steal all of the money, we reserve the right to reward zero for no reason at all. Like, that's not you know, something that we can do. Um, we do have actually some clauses there that you can reward zero then if they break certain rules. So, you know, that's, we're reasonable also in that regard. Um, we just want to make sure that this works as well as possible for the MakerDAO ecosystem. Sure, um, I, Joshua, I think I can take this one. Yeah, maybe um, I could read the question first. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so Vigilin <laughs> asked, uh, could you give a very high level overview of how the bug bounty program works <coughs> historically, including Immunify's role specifically? Sure, um, so, well, those are two different things. So, well, one on Immunify's role, we're a platform. Um, so just uh, for clarity, I'm, the facilitator for the for ISCU, but also at the same time, I'm a co-founder of Immunify. Um, Immunify's role is to create a community of security researchers uh, to look at the bug bounty programs of our clients. Um, Immunify also uh, creates a platform for which uh, bug, bug reports can be submitted. So these bug reports are held on a server that we control um, it's a much more secure uh, system than sending bug reports over emails or Discord messages. Um, so on top of that, we also provide a mediation service and a triaging service that uh, has actually been tapped into in some of the bug reports in the past, um, where if there was assistance in communicating with the security researcher or um, evaluating a bug report, um, that team came in. Um, I'm actually also helping out that team specifically only for MakerDAO. Um, in most cases anyway. 
Um, and also, yeah, drafting up the bug bounty program. So the work that was done in terms of making sure that the bug bounty program is written very thoroughly, uh, that there, that what is desired by the various uh, teams um, within the maker ecosystem is communicated properly to the bug bounty hunters. So I've been the one in Immunify who's drafted bug bounty programs for most of our early clients. Um, I've also been the one dealing with a lot of mediation cases in the early days. So I've seen a lot of the things that can be misinterpreted as well as a lot of the things that are in the heads of security researchers as they submit bug reports. So it's important to call those things out in the beginning. Um, by making sure that a bug bounty program is really thoroughly written, um, you reduce the amount of um, overhead that's needed to go back and forth with security researchers. So that's on the Immunify side of things. Um, and yeah, all of my contributions are via Immunify. Um, how it's worked uh, in terms of project, uh, sorry, client uh, or departmental uh, relations with the bug bounty program. We, we work with them in order to figure out what assets need to be onboarded um, into the bug bounty program. So um, back in the day, the protocol engineering uh, core unit, we worked with them in terms of figuring out what um, smart contracts needed to be added in the bug bounty program. If there were any restrictions that we would like to apply, uh, that they would like to apply there, as well as provide them with recommendations, um, you know, like if there was something that should be added or shouldn't be added uh, from our perspective, we would say that. But of course, the final decision um, was with them. Um, in addition to that, we we worked with, uh, of course, other core units as well about, you know, saying like, hey, uh, we think that your assets um, might be desirable to be included in the bug bounty program for MakerDAO. Um, and we were in discussions with some of them um, before a lot of the transitions happened. And um, so that's how it was on the various core unit side. For the bug reporting side, um, once a bug report would come in, um, we would do, uh, well, there would be automated filtering done by Immunify. So if there's somebody, you know, making a complete junk report and they're picking a asset that's not even under MakerDAO, um, it would just be rejected as they submit it. Um, but of course, there's still some junk that gets through eventually. And so uh, ISCU um, would do the initial evaluation of that bug report. Um, if it's something that's worth the time of uh, the respective core unit, which we, we, we call steward core unit, obviously, we're going to be changing these terms moving forward. Um, we would then add those people into the bug report. So if it was something with protocol engineering, um, we would then subscribe them to the bug report and uh, inform them that they need to look at the respective bug report. If they needed help, um, either from us or from the Immunify triaging team, then we would uh, initiate the mediation process so that uh, people on the Immunify side can further look into it as well. Um, that's not required at all. Uh, that only happens in a handful of cases. And yeah, also I believe chain security um, is connected to the program. So they're not automatically subscribed to all the bug reports, of course, but if ever the protocol engineering team needed uh, the auditors to take a look at the bug report for whatever reason, that was also possible. Um, the payouts then, um, I think Joshua, you can explain further on, on the payout side. Sure. Um, you mean the, the payment process? Yes, assuming that the respective core unit, the steward core unit said, yep, this is valid. Yes, this fits this yep. severity system. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> so, right, that was, um, that's one of the parameters that um, we're looking at maybe adjusting. So, um, we, we, we've had a, no, for the last year, we've had a budget for, uh, s small payouts. So, um, because the uh, maker executive process, um, you know, is kind of slow and um, it, it has a lot of overhead. Like it, it takes it takes a lot of people um, a lot of time to prepare a uh, an executive spell and uh, to to reduce that load. Um, our idea was to set aside a budget for small payouts that we could just um, send out of the small payouts budget. And uh, so we've done this a few times. And, um, and so the hackers 
or the, the white hats, they get their money sooner. Um, so they're happy and, uh, and then we can avoid burdening the developers that are crafting the executive spell. Um, so, <clears throat> um, right, I, I'm just reading, sorry, I'm reading the comment in the chat. I'll, I'll get to that. That was, a, that was a comment for when you're finished. Sorry, I was yeah, just yeah. getting in. Sorry, I just got distracted. Um, right, so so we've had this uh, budget for uh, small bounty payouts and um, the size of this budget is, uh, you know, it's open to debate. Um, the budget is really, it's controlled by the uh, Immunify security, um, it's a, it's like a core unit, right? Whatever we're called now, um, ecosystem actor. And uh, <clears throat> so, so we, you know, we wouldn't want to um, set the budget too high because that that would um, entail trusting us with large amounts of money. Um, so, um, you know, we, we've um, proposed uh, fifty thousand a month, and um, that could be reduced to, you know, twenty five thousand a month or ten thousand a month, whatever um, the delegates feel is. Uh, is a uh, appropriate amount to trust us with. Um, at the moment, uh, that budget is set to zero because you know our, all of all of the the budgets need to be renewed. Um, so if a uh, bug bounty um, is valid and needs to be paid, then even if it's like you know a uh, thousand die, it has to go through the um, the spell crafting process and into the next executive vote, which um, you know is probably not a good uh, use use of developers' time. So, uh, so that that's that's kind of the um, the some of the the issues around the payment process. Um, to to add to that, um, one of the reasons why it's also good from the overall bug bounty program operation side is that. Uh, on other bug bounty uh, programs on Immunify, payouts tend to happen in a much shorter time frame. I mean, of course, this this depends on um, when a valid bug report is, is submitted, but <clears throat> uh, it's also very encouraging to security researchers that uh, they will get paid sooner rather than later. So it just leaves a much more positive tone with them and to encourage them to further look into the code. Um, of course, they're very understandable. Uh, understanding, sorry, if the amount is large and therefore they need to go through the full executive spells process. Um, but for smaller amounts, uh, it's understandable also to expect from their side that the payouts are much faster. All right, um, maybe um, to, to cap. Oh, sorry, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to switch the uh, Patrick's comment if we're done with this topic. Uh, well, to cap things off, after the payment is made, um, uh, a postmortem is also created for the bug uh, bug report so that it's available for future reference, as well as just for citation um, to the security researcher who did a great job, and also for being honest and submitting the bug report instead of exploiting it, um, and also used as documentation. So um, that's something that Immunify also does. Um, I saw Vigilant has a comment in the chat. Um, what is the threshold for smaller amounts? So um, this is uh, the way we've done this in the past is it was up to the Immunify Security Core Unit to decide whether which process to use the small um, to, to uh, draw money from the small payout budget or to send it to the uh, executive spell. And we expect that to continue because you can't predict how how many bugs are going to be valid? Like your small um, your budget for small payouts could be exhausted, and then you don't have a choice but to send um, you know the, uh, 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 pass the um, the payouts to the executive spell crafting team. So yeah, and then yeah. it'll just depend on the, the size of the budget that's allocated. Um, yeah. So I think maybe a more concrete example that could be used here as well. Like, so if the budget uh, is you know twenty five thousand dollars, and a bug report comes in that can then be paid out twenty five thousand um, dollars, it might not be a good idea to drain the entire um, amount, uh, drain the entire budget 
for one single payment, um, especially if it's like a, right at the start of the month, because then, yeah, then 1001 moving forward will need to be sent to the full um, executive spell process. Um, Joshua, do you want to read the uh, questions that Patrick wrote out? Yeah. Um, let's see. His question was, can you explain why Maker specifically has a dedicated member of staff on the Immunify security side? Um, I mean, I guess I could address this. Sure. Um, so, right. So, um, uh, you know, we got we got a lot of bugs bug submissions and um, Immunify Immunify the company. They do some like basic tri triaging, but they don't have any um, special knowledge of how Maker works. So <clears throat> they can't um, they can't reject. Uh, that, like there's many bugs to get through their their initial triaging that uh, um, that could that with you know with a little um, knowledge of how Maker works um, uh, can can be um, evaluated as invalid and and so that, that's kind of the extra filtering um, that I've been doing and um, so I'm able to close many bugs and protect. Uh, developers from wasting their time um, evaluating them. Um, so that's um, that's a large part of why uh, you know why we have staff on the the IS side. Traven, it's, do you want to add? Yeah. Uh, so it's also, and I have to say, Josh has done a good job with this in terms of coordinating with other relevant stakeholders with the bug bounty program, making sure that um, you know, the, the information they gave us is up to date. Hey, please take a look. Um, are the assets there still ones that you'd like to have in the bug bandit program and so forth? Um, you know, for, for my side, you know, from the Immunify side, we, we think about bug bounty programs all day, every day, all, all days of the week, all days of the year. Um, but we don't expect everybody else to be doing that. And that's, we shouldn't actually. And so Josh has done a great job, um, being the point of contact, um, you know, some of the bug reports also come in and um, sometimes some discussions with um, people in the relevant departments, sometimes things can get confusing for not only myself, but also for the triaging or mediation team with Immunify, because there are terms that are used that are, um, you know, maybe not immediately clear to us. And then so um, we needed somebody who was a good point of contact who understood the history of MakerDAO, understood the overall architecture of MakerDAO, and understood the community and how to properly communicate the community. And so um, that's, that's why when we started out, um, as we were working with the SES core unit at the time, um, I highlighted this as a strong need um, because then it would allow things to operate much more smoothly. Um, and especially in bug bounty programs where time is of the essence um, of some bug reports at least, but usually those are the ones where it's very critical. So uh, having a lot of things, having things move more smoothly um, is definitely something that's beneficial. Um, if you meant by why Maker specifically has a dedicated member of Immunify on this, it's because we really value Maker as a client. Well, thank you for asking. Okay, I mean, that's been almost half an hour now, and I think we're at a point where we have exhausted questions. So I'll, I'll give a final call to those who are present, if anyone's got any questions they want to ask, and if not, we can wrap it up. Oh, there we go. One from Mitchell, and I'll leave you to answer that one. Um, 
Right, so I'll take this one. Uh, Vigilant asked regarding the MIP specifically, have you guys thought through whether this could be achieved through governance security budget instead? Um, I think Vigilant is referring to uh, budgets that have already been approved. And um, you know, my understanding from talking with developers is that they think those budgets are for them and not for the bug bounty program. So, um, and no developers have, have reached out to me saying, you know, hey, take our money because we, you know, we have this money that's allocated for you. Um, so, um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, Patrick um, just sent a link here. Governance. So so I just linked to the governance security budget. I mean, I can also help answer that question slightly. I mean, the, the governance security budget has a, a list of different things that it can be used for. The bug bounty program is not one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so in theory, you could amend this section of the protocol scope to say, hey, it can also be used for bug bounties, um, which would be a valid governance action. But at the moment, it wouldn't be appropriate to use those funds. So it's possible, but at, as, as things stand, we couldn't be using those funds for that work. Mm. Yeah, I see. And um, I guess, uh, we, you know, we'd be open to being funded through that mechanism as opposed to the um, currently proposed MIP the, or the MIP amendment um, that this call is about. Uh, but, you know, we, we want to do what is most uh, amenable to voters. So, um, you know, I, I would look to voters to um direct us which uh which approach we should take just to clarify as well as i think some people um might not be aware uh, there is no immunify onboarding fee there is no immunify maintenance fee um we might uh we offer a full uh premium triaging service um for higher filtering um, in the future. Um, I know that that was discussed in the early days of MIP64. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise, we, we run entirely on a performance basis. So if there's no valid bug reports that come in, uh, we get nothing. Um, okay, well, I think we've exhausted the questions, so I will end the recording here. Um, we'll, what I'll do, Josh, is I'll send you the link to the recording and you can do what you want with it. You could either um, probably post in the thread it might be helpful for people um if you really want we can upload it to youtube but let me know um and we can do whatever you want yeah i'll take care of it